conference today, we talked about what is digital health and where it can be used within the healthcare journey. We talked about the kind of do's and don'ts and general principles of using technology within healthcare. And then we talked about um, areas where it could be, could be um, implemented in our healthcare consultations and um, treatments with patients with MS. So digital health is anything in terms of using um, some kind of technology within healthcare. So it can be anything from using a telephone to using mobile apps um, to using Zoom or any you know um, NHS near me th things like that. Digital consultations and um, to using um, apps or um, any kind of resources technology wise to to help with exercise. So the main benefit um, from digital health is patient choice. The patient's having the ability to choose whether they have face-to-face -face appointments or whether it's an online appointment um, uh, or using any kind of technology um, as opposed to whatever previously we had been using before um, in their healthcare. The other benefits are that um, sometimes the, the benefit gained um, from attending the appointment is outweighed by the effort of attending. So in terms of managing fatigue and things like that. Um, it also allows a little bit of patient choice in terms of if patients are working or have health um, childcare responsibilities um, or have significant travel uh, for attending an appointment. And the other benefit is that patients can feel more at home and um, comfortable in their own environment compared to attending a, a clinic appointment. Yeah, absolutely. So some of the things that we might do in a face-to-face -face appointment can't really happen in a digital appointment or online appointment. So it might be that the assessment needs to be slightly different, um, but some assessments still can take place. For some things that we need to be face-to-face um, -face in terms of carrying out a physical assessment, those things will still have to happen in a face-to-face -face appointment. But certainly there's some things that can be done. So first of all, I think it's important to recognize that it's digital tech is not for everyone, um, but there, the figures are suggesting that people are becoming more tech savvy than previously. For those that are keen to use technology, but maybe aren't feeling that tech savvy, there are still um, things that can be done to support you. So things like um, charities or organizations that might help with providing some training on how to use technology, such as AbilityNet. Um, I think it's important though that there's some patient choice um, involved that um, people can choose what they use and, and what they don't use. Um, and that whatever we do decide to use is as user-friendly as possible, so easy to navigate around and involves the little or the least amount of clicks as possible. Yeah, so in terms of preparing for a digital consultation, we might want to think about what device are you going to use um, for that? Um, are you going to use a tablet device or your phone or a laptop, for instance? Do you need to download any software? Hopefully that healthcare professional will have told you what software needs to be downloaded or perhaps if none needs to be downloaded at all and you might just need to follow a link to join a, a, a video call. You might also need to think about your connectivity. Do you have Wi-Fi access? Um, are you going to use 3G, 4G, for instance? Um, and you might need to think about um, perhaps there's places in your house that have better connectivity than others and what are you going to do if that, that connectivity or the tech fails um, during the appointment. First thing I would say is not to panic, not to, not to worry um, and you will maybe need to switch on and off, it might be very simple things like that, um, rejoin the meeting um, but also know that your healthcare professional will understand what has happened if that connectivity, that call fails um, in the middle of the call? 
um, they may have provided you with a telephone number to call um, so that you can carry on with the conversation via telephone rather than a video call. In terms of um, preparing for that appointment, you need to think about the physical space you're going to be in. Um, so does, uh, do you have the space, first of all, perhaps maybe for a walking test? Um, where are you going to put your device that you can be seen? Um, you might need to think about the lighting. Um, you might need a bit more lighting um, again so that you can be seen in the video call. Um, you might also need to think about the privacy. So are you in a space that you can comfortably have a conversation with that healthcare professional and not worry too much about who's listening in? You might need to still um, think about in the same way as well that you would do for attending a face-to-face -face appointment. Think about what you want to ask. You might need to write your questions down. You might need to have your list of medications. Um, so things like that in the same way that you prepare for a face-to-face -face appointment. Yeah, absolutely. You might still want to have um, your partner or a family member that attend the appointment with you in the same way that you would do in a face-to-face -face appointment. Yes, there's lots of technologies that can be used out with appointments um, to help manage um, your MS. So first of all, you could use um, mobile phone apps to measure or monitor um, MS symptoms. And that's really good because it can be used um, you know, between your annual reviews and that way you can really track how your symptoms are changing over time and maybe how they're fluctuating with um, changes with hormones and things like that. Other things that you can use would be um, podcasts or again, mobile phone apps that have um, ed education um, to help support you and um, provide you with a bit more information about different things that you might not have thought about that might help you with um, managing your MS. And then obviously a big thing in managing MS is exercise. So there's lots of things that can be done to help you exercise. Um, you know, things right through from following a DVD video, YouTube videos. There can be, again, mobile phone apps that have been um, developed for um, helping you exercise. And you might have prescribed exercise from a physiotherapist or from an exercise specialist, and they could provide that digitally as well. Thank you.